If you've enjoyed listening to Consider Before Consuming, consider making a one-time or recurring donation to support the podcast. Your contribution, whatever the amount, helps support our efforts to educate individuals on the impacts of pornography. Help keep this podcast going by donating to Consider Before Consuming today at ftnd.org forward slash support. That's ftnd.org forward slash support. My name is Garrett Johnson, and you're listening to Consider Before Consuming, a podcast by Fight the New Drug. And in case you're new here, Fight the New Drug is a non-religious and non-legislative organization that exists to provide individuals the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding pornography by raising awareness on its harmful effects using only science, facts, and personal accounts. Welcome to part six of our Get the Facts series, where we explore the research on a specific topic surrounding porn's harms on individuals, relationships, and society to help you be more informed and empowered with the facts. Today's episode is why today's internet porn is unlike anything the world has ever seen. You can find the sources to the claims made in this episode or read along at ftnd.org forward slash get the facts. Now let's get to the episode. The year was 1953, and Hugh Hefner had just published the first copy of Playboy. Although the magazine only offered still images, the growing popularity of Playboy meant that pornographic imagery was becoming increasingly available to the public. Fast forward to the 1980s, and VCRs suddenly made it possible for people to watch movies at home. Instead of having to go to sketchy movie theaters, consumers just went to the back room at their local movie rental place. Sure, they still had to go out and find it and get their IDs checked. But porn was even more accessible than it had ever been. And then the internet happened. Once porn hit the web in the 1990s, nothing but a few keystrokes stood between anyone with an internet connection and the most graphic material available. For the first time in history, people could watch anything they wanted, whenever they wanted, from the comfort of their own home. Add to that the dawn of the smartphone a decade later, and boom, porn was more available, accessible, affordable, and anonymous than ever. Online porn was big business in a way the world had never seen. Today, porn sites receive more website traffic in the U.S. than Twitter, Instagram, Netflix, Pinterest, and LinkedIn combined. Pornhub, one of the leading porn sites in the world, claimed that in 2019 they had 42 billion visitors with 39 billion searches performed. That's 115 million a day, almost 5 million an hour, and almost 80,000 a minute. And that's just one site. To put that in perspective, in the time it takes you to read this article, that one porn site will have recorded more than 200,000 visits, according to their own estimates. As for 2019 uploads to the site, Pornhub estimates 12,500 gigabytes per minute, enough to fill the memories of every smartphone in the world. Together, the top five porn websites in the world account for more than 6 billion visits per month, nearly one a month for every person on Earth. The argument that porn is nothing new, that it's been around forever and never caused any great harm, seems pretty naive when you think about how different today's internet porn is from anything that existed before. Porn is incomparably more accessible and more extreme than anything before seen. Even a generation ago, a couple of old centerfold magazines found in the park are nothing compared to the hardcore, high-definition videos that minors have access to today. As the internet has grown, it has also allowed for more graphic and more extreme pornographic content. With so much porn available, pornographers compete for consumers' attention by constantly pushing boundaries and exploiting taboos. According to studies analyzing the content of popular porn videos, it's estimated that as few as 1 in 3 and as many as 9 in 10 scenes show acts of physical aggression or violence, while about half contain verbal aggression. These studies also found that women were the targets of aggression or violence about 97% of the time. 
And yet another study found that one out of every eight porn titles shown to first-time visitors to porn sites described acts of sexual violence. Dr. Norman Doidge, a neuroscientist and author of The Brain That Changes Itself, writes, and I quote, 30 years ago, hardcore pornography usually meant the explicit depiction of sexual intercourse. Now, hardcore has evolved and is increasingly dominated by the sadomasochistic themes involving scripts fusing sex with hatred and humiliation. End quote. In our post-Playboy world, porn now routinely features degradation, abuse, and humiliation of people in a way never before seen in the mass media. Softcore is now what hardcore was a few decades ago, Deutsch explains, the comparatively tame softcore pictures of yesteryear. Today, porn's effects have permeated nearly every aspect of our lives. Technology has changed not only the content of porn, but also how, when, and at what age people begin consuming it. Studies show that most young people are exposed to porn by age 13, and according to a nationally representative survey of U.S. teens, 84% of 14- to 18-year-old males and 57% of 14- to 18-year-old females have viewed pornography. That's a lot of underage exposure to an industry that claims to be adult entertainment. Today's internet pornography is a phenomenon that's completely different from still images in Playboy magazines or a few porn videos checked out from your local movie rental place. The availability, accessibility, affordability, and anonymity of internet porn has had unprecedented negative effects on individuals, relationships, and our culture as a whole. But the good news is that in response to the unprecedented proliferation of pornography in our culture, there is also an unprecedented number of resources to help, whether through spreading awareness about pornography or helping those who feel caught in a porn habit they can't seem to break. As people continue to learn, research, and become more informed about the potential negative effects of internet pornography, they'll be armed with knowledge to create a healthier world. For those listening who feel they are struggling with pornography, you're not alone. Check out Fortify, a science-based recovery platform dedicated to helping you find lasting freedom from pornography. Fortify now offers a free experience for both teens and adults. Connect with others, learn about your unwanted porn habit, and track your recovery journey. There is hope. Decades of studies from respected academic institutions have demonstrated significant impacts of porn consumption for individuals, relationships, and society. Our Get the Facts resource features 15 articles that summarize relevant research on a specific topic surrounding porn's harms to help you be more informed and more empowered with the facts. Read all 15 Get the Facts articles at ftnd.org forward slash get the facts. That's ftnd.org forward slash get the facts. Thanks for joining us on this episode of Consider Before Consuming. Consider Before Consuming is brought to you by Fight the New Drug. Fight the New Drug is a non-religious and non-legislative organization that exists to provide individuals the opportunity to make an informed decision regarding pornography by raising awareness on its harmful effects using only science, facts, and personal accounts. If you've enjoyed listening to Consider Before Consuming, consider subscribing and leaving a review. Again, big thanks to you for listening to this episode. As you go about your day, we invite you to increase your self-awareness, look both ways, check your blind spots, and consider before consuming.